Les le bon temps roule. Let the good times roll, baby. Mardi Gras is back at Universal Orlando. What up, man fam? We're at Universal's Mardi Gras. We're in a couple of days here to see all the festival has to offer. This seasonal event celebrates festivals around the world with different food booths, parades, bead catching, entertainment, so much more. So let's get in there. I'm ready to catch some beads. Let's roll. <laughs> Universal's Mardi Gras kicked off February 4th and runs all the way through April 16th. The theme is international flavors of Carnival because they step outside just the New Orleans Bayou and they celebrate festivals all over the world. So you're going to see food booths from Spain and Colombia, Trinidad and Tobago and India and beyond. You're also going to see a wide variety of flavors and themes throughout the parade and entertainment. It is just a darn good time. So we are here to check out as much as we possibly can. Hi, Beetlejuice. You look great. I know. <laughs> I like your beads. A little bit all right, too. Thank you. There are also concert select nights from performers such as the Goo Goo Dolls, Patti LaBelle, Sean Paul, and more. And those are included with your ticket. Possibly one of the best deals at Mardi Gras is the food and beverage card. Now, for non-annual pass holders, you can buy a $75 gift card for $65. But if you are an annual pass holder to Universal, you can buy a $150 gift card for $120. Now that is $10 savings for those of you who are not annual pass holders and $30 savings for those of you who are. Not only does this food and beverage card work at the Mardi Gras stands, it also works at any universal owned dining location. So if you wanted to use it to buy, say, some butterbeer, you absolutely could. It also has no expiration date, which means that you can use it long after the Mardi Gras event has ended. And as if that wasn't enough, annual pass holders can still use their discount on food at the Mardi Gras booths. So you're getting more bang for your buck. Enough talking, I'm feeling snacky. Beignets, let's go eat. Get it? Because beignets, it's Mardi Gras. You know what? I did put that together. I did. Let's gum go. Like gumbo. The first round of food has arrived. Now let's take a moment and acknowledge the fact that Universal is doing the most and has a specific beer made for this festival. It is a king cake doppelbach that has been made just for Mardi Gras. It's called Oh Baby, and it was made by Crooked Can, which is a local brewery. It says it's going to be bursting with cinnamon and vanilla flavors. We also picked up the fried green tomato po' boy, which is flash fried green tomatoes, lettuce, onion, pickle, a Cajun remoulade served with kettle Cajun chips. Cajun kettle chips? Either way, they look delicious. And in true Mammoth Club fashion, we are starting this video off with a twisted tater. This is one of Universal's legendary snacks that they bring out for their festivities. It is a fried spiralized potato. You get to choose your choice of seasoning. They just got seasoning salt, garlic parm, sour cream and chive, or ghost pepper, which is what we went with. We also added the spicy and dewy white cheddar sauce, and they said mild or hot on that white cheddar sauce, and we said hot, baby. It's New Orleans after all. We said it just like that. Starting with the O oh Baby beer. Now, I also want to point out that we went ahead and got the souvenir cups. There are two different sizes of souvenir cups, and these are refillable throughout Mardi Gras. You can refill the festival beers as well as the festival beverages. Because we got the bigger cup, you can save $4 plus on your refills, which is a pretty good deal if you're going to come more than once or have more than one adult beverage. Also, the band is playing. This event is such a vibe. It's like one of my favorite events of the year. That's delicious. It looks like it's gonna be really heavy and I wouldn't call it really heavy. It's definitely got some notes of sweetness. You can taste that vanilla, a little bit of that cinnamon. It's a nice kind of lighter dark beer, which sounds like an oxymoron, but this is great and I would definitely do it again. And I just really wanna give props to Universal for making a custom beer for a festival, which I've never seen. I just love it so much. It's so simple. It's just a fried potato. Ooh. I wasn't getting a ton of heat off the potato itself, even though we asked for the ghost pepper seasoning, but there's definitely some spice in this queso. It's nice and creamy and cheesy. A little bit of that Cajun seasoning from the uh, sausage and a little bit of heat. So this is awesome. I'm going to get this again. All right. We're going to try the fried green tomato po' boy. As somebody who grew up in the deep south, I love fried green tomatoes. 
I love po' boys. This is carbs on carbs, but it's a vegetable. So it's healthy. Oh my God. All right, let's start out with this. First of all, there's a lot of bread. Be aware of that. If you want to maybe tear out some of the bread, that would be a hack I would give you for this. Just to make room for more of that fried green tomato and the remoulade, which is lights out. The thing that a lot of places struggle with with fried tomatoes is there's so much moisture in it. It's hard for the exterior to be crispy and actually hang on. This is a good mixture of what looks to be cornmeal and flour, crispy. Uh, and the remoulade is a nice acidic offset to that really fresh, bright flavor of a fried green tomato. I am in my happy place. I have picked up the Canadian snowshoe maple. That is a lot of, a lot of very chunky words. I'm gonna try it again. I have picked up the Canadian snowshoe maple. Now they also have one of these called the Canadian snowshoe Nutella, but that seemed like sweet on sweet on sweet. So I decided to go with the maple from the Canada booth. This is a fried sweetened dough that is covered with cinnamon sugar and then maple syrup, as you kind of see throughout. Is this a donut? Uh, it's a Canadian donut. A flattened Canadian donut. It feels like a donut. You know what? It might be, but I think you should try it. We should I'm, give it a whirl. I'm gonna try it, eh? Okay, they gave me a fork, but uh, I decided to go against it and I'm regretting it now. It's very sticky. All right. I think I love that. The exterior is very crisp and crunchy. It's super like, it's like a crunchy flaky situation where on the inside it's light and fluffy and airy, coated in that cinnamon sugar, but it's not too sweet, which is good. It's mostly just light, airy, but still somehow crunchy and crispy and it's gone from my hand now. And so the influencer who has presumably not enjoyed donuts is going to attempt to try one. And she approaches it tentatively thinks for a moment and finds herself surprised. She enjoys it. Look at the head knot. This is one of approval. Ah, but we are thinking as we've moved into more of the mastication that we might not, well, she's going back for more. So I think it is perhaps a win. Oh, we're just eating, oh, wait, wait a minute. I actually don't think it tastes like a donut at all. It tastes like fried dough. Um, it's not doughy like a donut. It's very hollow on the inside. I actually think in a few places it's a little dry where there's not maple syrup, so I do wish there was more maple syrup. But I like the cinnamon sugar. I like that it's not too sweet. My family, when they're making pie, if there's extra pie crust, they roll it out thin and they add cinnamon sugar on it and bake it, and it tastes like that to me. So I like it. It's a good sweet treat. I'm more of a savory person, so I'd go for the savory items first, but it's a, it's a fun sweet treat. Okay. I wonder if the Nutella would add more to the, uh, to the sort of moistness factor. I do think that's probably true. It would be a little stickier, a little sweeter, but it would, might not be as dry, but not bad. This whole event just such a vibe with the music. We found the Japan booth. It's tucked away here in the New York area. It's a really cool booth. And we are trying the Okonomiyaki. Did I say that right? I hope so, I'm trying. It is a savory cabbage and bacon pancake with kewpie mayonnaise, hoisin, cilantro, sesame, and katsubushi on top. I'm very excited to try this. The team member said it's awesome and it looks great. Ooh. I know this is a common street food in Japan, the different pancakes with different toppings on it. I'm really enjoying it. It's a lot of different flavors going on. The seaweed is a little too salty for me, but I really like the kewpie mayonnaise. I like the hoisin sauce, I like the cilantro. I like the pancake itself. I definitely think this is one of the more adventurous items on the uh, the Mardi Gras menus this year. It's definitely different than a fried potato dipped in cheese sauce, but I think it's really fun, really interesting and new to me. So I'm enjoying it. We have picked up the Spanish bocadillo, which is serrano ham, a drunken goat cheese and parsley sauce on a gently pressed, they have stated, baguette. Um, I'm going to be honest. This is the most gentle press that has ever existed on this baguette because it has maintained its form perfectly. Molly, my filming person right now, is very distracted by the birds, so I'll just get this quick for you. It's honestly anybody's guess if the camera's still on my face. It's not. I'm just gonna eat this. Just protecting the sandwich. Is this all one cheese? <laughs> yeah. 
The only negative is I wish there was more ham, but that chunk of cheese really makes up for it. Here. I love Crispy baguette, a lot of bread. So again, this is the second time now where there's a whole lot of bread to a sandwich. So just be aware of that. It is pretty filling just because of that. Big slab of drunken goat cheese, juicy uh, vine ripened tomatoes, and a parsley sauce over the top. Now we did ask them because I do have a pie nut allergy. We asked them if there are any tree nuts present in this sauce. There are none. So for those of you with nut allergies, you don't have to fear. Uh, we actually avoided the Italy booth while I was here a little bit earlier because it does have the pesto. The ham is just salty enough. Again, I wish there was more of a presence of the ham on the sandwich. It would add a little bit more uh, depth of salty flavor. We gotta get out of here. It's a really good sandwich. Cheers. One of my favorite thing about Universal events is that all of the street atmosphere, the street entertainment gets involved. So you'll see everything from characters wearing Mardi Gras beads to the street performers performing Mardi Gras songs, like the Beat Builders, who added in a little When the Saints Go Marching In number. <laughs> why I just liked the Beat Builder so much. It was because there was a new Beat Builder today. I've built many a thing in my life. I have not built a beat until today. The Beat Builders always choose a random person from the audience to be part of the show, and today was Alan, and it was awesome. I, I did get to play some cowbell. I lived my best Will Ferrell from SNL life. You were Christopher Walken hitting that cowbell. Yeah. Proud of you. Sure. Thank you. Thank Proud you. From Orlando, Florida. <laughs> Sorry. This big moment right here, your chance to be a beat builder. Are you ready? Come on. Hit that cowbell with that stick. Yes! Hey, let's have a level with the beat builder's theme song! All right, Alan, listen up. You're here for a reason because you have what it takes to be a beat builder. Now let's put it to the test. One, two, three, four. I knew it. All right, I know it. All right, Alan, here comes the theme. I'd like to thank the Academy oh. for the opportunity to uh, get involved with building beats. I'd like uh, my countless hours of watching Bob Vila on This Old House for really preparing me for the beat that I had to build today. Um, and most of all, I'd like to thank my just general sort of DIY focus for the last five years. Uh, it's, I think, really prepared me for this day. And I don't think there's any Anything uh, else I could achieve? I reached the pinnacle. No one else to thank? No, no, that's it. <laughs> Post Epic Beat Builders performance, we have stopped at the India booth to try the onion bhaji. This is a fried onion fritter and a green curry dipping sauce. Very excited about this. I like onions. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's like a next level Bloomin' Onion. The onion itself really does remind me of a Bloomin' Onion. It's a Vidalia onion, so it's got a little bit of sweetness in it. Really, really crispy and deep fried, but the winner is the sauce. I love curry, so it's got that strong curry flavor. I think this would be a good introduction to curry or to Indian flavors if you're not familiar with them because you may like fried onion. This is nice, really shareable. I think this is a good choice. Are you filming? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, we just went to the Central City kiosk. Now, this is where you can get your uh, low country boils, your shrimp boil or crawfish boil. I've tried them in years past. They are very good. They're a little probably underspiced if you're actually someone from New Orleans, but I'm just not a huge seafood fan, so figured we'd skip that one. But of course, had to get some beignets, beignets. You can get these at several kiosks around. Oh my God, look how much powdered sugar is on that. That is thick. See how they stack up to my beloved Mickey Benyasses. Do I have anything on my face? No, you're good. Great. So good. Got it. 
certainly not on your shirt either. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like a pattern to the graveyard. Okay. I think they're better than they were last year. I remember last year not being a big fan. I don't think they had as much powdered sugar last year. I don't know that they're as good as Mickey beignets. They don't taste as fluffy as Mickey beignets, but they are quite tasty. They've got a ton of powdered sugar. They're still light and airy. Slight sweetness to the dough, obviously sweetness to the powdered sugar, but they're not overly sickly sweet. I think they're quite good and they're easily shareable. You get four of them in a pack. So I feel like you can't do Mardi Gras without a beignet. So definitely a fan. We also got a refill in our shiny Mardi Gras cup. This is the Abita Purple Haze. Now Abita is a New Orleans brewery, uh, which is apropos that they would have it here in Mardi Gras. Purple Haze itself is one of my favorite beers. It is light, nice raspberry notes, a little hoppy on the back end, and literally never gonna complain about having an Abita. We also were able to save about $4.50 because we had this refillable mug. It's cost effective and delicious. They're basically giving it away. You're losing money if you're not drinking this beer. To be clear, this is not an ad, but we do like collectible cups. Maybe too much. And discounted beer. Fair is fair. Taking a little food break and bringing our purple hazes to the Tribute Store. Now the Tribute Store isn't a new location this year. It's right across from the horror makeup show and born supremacy near mel's dine in as opposed to being over in the new york area the tribute store is done by universal creative and they do multiple of these stores a year these are exquisite stores that are an experience in of themselves even if you don't plan on buying anything i definitely recommend coming into the tribute store because they're wonderful and detailed and really fun to walk through Last year, the Mardi Gras tribute store was all about float making in New Orleans for Mardi Gras. This year, it's kind of a tribute to New Orleans, and it looks like we're starting. Yeah, like a tribute tribute store, nice. you get it. It looks like we're starting with a jazz club. We found candles. Hmm. I like that. I feel like Mardi Gras candles smell like alcohol and regret. We've got the bandstand right here, but what I think is probably the coolest is up top here, you have all these different posters with all of the different carnivals around the world. So that's the theme of Mardi Gras this year. It is international flavors of carnival. So they've gone, again, outside of New Orleans and Mardi Gras, but they've got carnival in Brazil and India and Japan and Indonesia and Belgium and Spain and all these different countries around the world and their festivities. So these posters are really cool. And of course, the Tribute Store is a store, so they've got a lot of the different Mardi Gras merchandise you can purchase, anything from hoodies to t-shirts to hats to cups to candles, all kinds of specialty designed Mardi Gras items. I think you need that. I personally think I should swap my louder, wilder, spicier hat for this year's version, which is looking snazzy and feeling jazzy. Who are we kidding? This is clearly the best version of that hat. It's from last year. It is the coolest hat ever. Everyone loves it. Moving into the next room, a little bit darker, almost a little bit spooky. We're in the back door alleyway now to get into the jazz club. So you've got some old statues, you've got this tree, you've got beads hanging everywhere, some pieces of Mardi Gras floats. If you listen closely, you can hear cats and crickets and jazz music faintly playing. The detail in these stores is unbelievable a team member just pointed out that this sign in the alleyway translates to earl the squirrel avenue which is a nod to earl the squirrel from the christmas time here at universal there is also a hidden earl in the bar amazing this sign talking about prohibition leads me to believe that room three right here is a speakeasy because you've got some old bottles on the shelves. You've got the, the bar here. This is really, really cool. Tribute Spirits, established 1920. You know what? These are people's faces on it that bought into the Tribute Store. So that's something fun Universal does is you can usually purchase a spot to be on the wall, but this year you're on alcohol bottles, which is really funny. Looking at the pictures on the wall, they vandalized the photos of people pouring out alcohol with little devil horns and devil mustaches, <laughs> which is funny. This room is also where you've got your treats. The tribute stores usually end with a delightful treat case. We've got a variety of Mardi Gras themed treats in here. Let's take a look. Trifle cake, Fleur de Lis brownie, Mardi Gras mask brownie, chocolate covered bacon, rainbow fudge, chocolate chip cookie dough ball, 
maple bacon cookie dough ball, s'mores, marshmallow pop, more fudge, maple bourbon macaron, bananas foster macaron. I did like that tribute store. I always like walking through the tribute stores. I think they're so cool and so detailed. The treats look good as well. The macarons are normally quite tasty. I also like the cookie dough balls, but we're gonna keep eating our way around the booths. We went to the Brazil booth and picked up the Bicana skewers, and I'm very, very sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but you have beef sirloin caps, Pau de Quejo and a chimichurri sauce and some smoked salt that has been sprinkled across. So I'm going to give this beef cap a dip. That's it. Okay, how do I? We need a better dip. There we go. Acceptable. Okay, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. The chimichurri is very good. Acidic, light, refreshing. The meat and sirloin cap is cooked incredibly well. It is very tender, it is moist. There's just enough fat on it to ensure that it actually is really nice and flavorful. And the smoked salt does come through, which is really nice. And now we're going to do them about the Kieho, and I promised Molly that I wouldn't eat all of it. So I'm going to do that. There we go. Yeah. Pau de Kieho is incredible. Cheesy bread, that sort of potato corn starch in the middle that keeps everything so nice with the cheese. Oh, God, so good. Listen, I was pretty shocked about this coming at the price point. I think it was like maybe $10 for this dish with a discount around nine. So for the $9, I expected the serving size to be a little bit larger, but I will tell you that the quality of the food, I mean, it, it makes up for it. It's actually very, very tasty. So we stopped by Columbia and I got the Coco Loco, which is limeade sweetened with coconut. And this is the adult beverage. So if you want the non-alcoholic beverage, you can just get the limeade sweetened coconut, but the Choco Loco has rum and tequila as well. Now, normally I'm not a fan of these sort of pre-made drinks, but that tastes like a liquid key lime pie Ooh. with a little bit of spice from the tequila and rum kind of coming out of the back in there, flavoring it. It's very good. It's lighter than I anticipated. Uh, it's not super sweet, but I think I would only ever be able to have one of these just because it is a pretty sweet beverage. Honestly, I'm impressed. For somebody who normally sticks to the craft beers in these festivals, I wouldn't say no to another one of these. Maybe just one a day, but I wouldn't say no to another one. Also from Colombia, the main reason we went is to get the queso arepa. So it's a corn patty with cheese and then it's got a picante dipping sauce. Cheese. It's very simple. It tastes like cornmeal and cheese. I do like the sauce a lot. It has a little bit of natural sweetness in the dipping sauce. Not any heat. I would like some heat from the, the salsa as well. It is very good. I wish I had more cheese and less corn. I would say I would rather get something a little bit more exciting. This is very, very simple. So if I were to get one cheesy dish, I would prefer something like the bocadillo, which had that huge slab of goat cheese, but it also had the ham and the tomato and the, and the sauce and everything. So this is good. It's very simple if you're looking for something plain, maybe something for the kids, but we've had more exciting things that I would prefer to get again. Hello there, friends. Hey. <sighs> Listen. We'd like to share just a little brief PSA. We've heard it before and we're gonna say it again, but this is a PSA to be nice to team members. I'm taking all my glasses, it's that serious. I'm not sure what you think you're gonna accomplish by yelling at the team members, handing you the food, that the food is too expensive. I don't know what you think you're gonna accomplish by yelling at team members anyway. As many our grandmother mothers used to say, you catch more flies with sugar than with vinegar. So just as another friendly reminder, be nice to team members, be nice to cast members, they're just handing you the food, don't yell at them. I'd like to remind you that you can give cast and team member compliments uh, yes. on both social media, at Guest Relations, or in the Walt Disney World app. So do that. Thank you. Thank you. Back where we started today in this kind of New Orleans food corridor because we had to get the king cake. Now the king cake is one of my favorite treats at Mardi Gras every year. And I'm sure if you're actually from New Orleans or go to real Mardi Gras, you'll say this is not a good king cake, but I like it. It's about $14, then there's a discount on top of that, which, speaking of how much things cost, I mean, you're literally getting a cake. Like, this thing's as big as my face. So, very shareable, very easy to take home. They put the baby right there on top. I know traditionally, oh, this is not steady. Uh, I know traditionally with king cake, you find the baby, but I believe because people don't know that, they don't want to have the baby in there as a choking hazard, so they just kind of put the baby right there. But king cake is basically a giant cinnamon roll. It's a cinnamon cake with frosting on it, and then it's got some nice delicious sugars on top. Cheers.
The band just walked by. I'm telling you, this event is such a vibe. I think this king cake is awesome. Really doughy, biscuit-like almost cake. It's got that cinnamon flavor. It's definitely a sweet treat, obviously, but it's not sickly sweet. It doesn't taste artificial. And again, this is a huge treat that a ton of people could share or you could bring home. King cake is one of my favorites every year. Happy to have another one. Also look at the baby. Doesn't this mean good luck? Good luck for us, but not a baby. Headed to grab a spot now for the Mardi Gras parade. This is one of my favorite universal entertainment offerings all year long. The parade this year is creature themed, so there are gonna be mythical and magical creatures from all over in the parade, as well as the infamous large gator, the king gator parade float. But what's so fun about this parade is that they have volunteers throwing beads. You, yes, you could ride a parade float and throw beads to the parade viewers. If you'd like to throw beads, you can either sign up in the Universal app. The spots do tend to go quickly though, so look for those early or continue to check back. You can also sign up for the dinner and float ride package where you have dinner somewhere at Universal Property and then you get a spot on the parade floats to throw those beads. Alan and I actually have one booked in a few weeks, so we will be checking that out then. But for tonight, we are going to be professional bead catchers and try and get as many as we can. First of all, catching beads is a competitive sport, in my opinion. Yeah. I gave him those. Listen, somebody has to get footage. You can catch one-handed. It's a great parade. I think it's incredibly creative to have all of those floats put together, reminiscent of what you'd see in Mardi Gras in New Orleans. And the new sections were really, really fun. It was all these different mythical creatures, but done in a New Orleans flair. So there were Pegasus and there were woodland creatures and fire creatures and dragons. It was a really great parade. I love this every year and a little nostalgic moment for me. The first time I ever came to Universal Studios when I was eight years old, it was during Mardi Gras. And my favorite thing I did all day was watch the parade with my mom and catch a bunch of beads. So maybe I have nostalgia love for this parade or this event, but it's just a really good time. Hello, I am back for another day of fun at Mardi Gras. Universal invited me to their media event today where we actually get to speak to some of the chefs and the creative team and check out some more aspects of Mardi Gras. But I'm here a little bit early before the event because there's one food everybody's talking about that I gotta go in and try. When Alan and I went this weekend, we were a little full by the time we got to this little corridor. And the item that I'm gonna get is a pretty hearty item, but I've seen multiple people post on social media that this is like the item of Mardi Gras. So we're gonna get it. This yummy looking treat is from the Germany booth and it's the chicken schnitzel with Casa Spatzel. So it's a fried chicken thigh cutlet. I love that it comes with a fresh lemon. And this is baked spatzel with beer cheese. Spatzel is kind of like a noodle, so it's kind of gonna be like a beer cheese macaroni and cheese. I'm so excited about this. Okay, I cut up all the chicken, squeeze the fresh lemon on it. Let's look at this cheese. Oh. Oh my gosh. Okay, it doesn't look like a real spatzel. It looks more like macaroni and cheese. Maybe I don't know what spatzel is, but I thought spatzel was smaller and this feels like big noodles. This is my dream. Oh my gosh, look at all that cheese. No wonder like multiple of my friends were like, did you try this? This has your name written all over it. All right, here we go. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. I wish the chicken had a little more seasoning on the chicken itself. It's breaded really nicely. It's fried really nicely. It's got this really nice flaky crust. And I do like the lemon on there to add some acidity and brightness to it. But I wish the chicken itself had more flavor. 
This mac and cheese though is amazing. Definitely has that hint of beer cheese, really, really creamy. This is a great item for something heartier. My HP discount is about $8.50, which I feel like is a pretty good price considering the portion size and how filling this is gonna be. Definitely shareable if you're trying multiple things around with a lot of people, or it'd be a good meal for one person. Yeah, this is awesome. Okay, let's go to the meaty bun. Look at this absolutely bonkers Bloody Mary that you can get at the Bloody Mary booth. They have it wild or mild. This is the wild one, which means it's spicy, but either of them can come with all these toppings. It's got a pepperoncini, a pickle, shrimp, bacon, cheese. Oh yeah. It's a pretty good Bloody Mary. I really like Bloody Marys. I know there's, that's a divide. Um, it's not as spicy as I would like it. If I was making a Bloody Mary, I'd put extra Tabasco, extra pepper in it, but it's pretty approachable. Can't taste the vodka really, but it's really fun. For me, I would rather put a beer in the refillable mug, especially the one you can't get anywhere else. But if you're a Bloody Mary drinker, this is a fun ad they do every year. Okay, I was just trying to find the name of it and I can't find it. So I need someone that lives in Texas to tell me what I'm talking about. When we lived in Houston, there was a Bloody Mary mix and it had a dog on the bottle and there were different levels of spice. And it was like the best Bloody Mary mix I've ever had. And I've never seen it anywhere else except for Specs in Houston, Texas. So if you know what I'm talking about, Please share that below. Um, my name is Robert Martinez Jr. I'm the executive sous chef of research and development here at Universal Orlando. So there's definitely well over 50 food items throughout Universal Studios Orlando and spread out in Volcano Bay, Islands of Adventure, and the party comes out at the City Walk as well. India is one of my favorites. Um, so we partnered with one of our team members this year on the Indian cuisine. Um, it wasn't one of our specialties. Um, so we really wanted to know how long they cooked the spices for, what the spices were, um, what the backstory was to some of these uh, certain dishes. Um, so India is one of those countries that um, I really love. Me and my wife love to eat Indian food. So I really love that we made it happen, happen here at uh, Universal. Try as much food as you possibly can. Have as much drinks as you possibly can. That's what I would suggest to uh, a newbie coming into the parks, uh, not knowing really what to expect with Universal International Flavors of Colombo. So just have fun with it. So the Rod Pulse from Denmark, it's actually a hot dog, okay. right? But if you actually research it, it's the national dish of Denmark, go figure. But it's delicious. It's got a curry aioli inside of it, some crispy uh, fried onions on it. The hot dog itself is red. Um, but it's just red because of a little bit of dye. Um, it's sort of like a Vienna hot dog. It's super delicious. We put it inside of a lobster roll bun, so we toasted, we butter toasted on each side, <laughs> so you get that crunch. That's definitely a sleeper. Denmark is a sleeper this year. Awesome, be sure to check it out. Thank you so much, Chef. Thank you. Just chatted with Chef Robert, and he talked about some of his favorite things that are at Mardi Gras this year. I love that they pulled team members from all around the world to help them create some of these menu items. But I asked him what a sleeper hit was, what is something underrated, and he said the hot dog from Denmark. Um, so there's food for us to try at the event, and a lot of it we tried already in the park, but they happen to have the hot dog here. So you know what? Chef Robert told me to, so I'm going to try it. I'm going to try the back end because it's got more of the crispies and the cucumber and he said it's on a buttered lobster roll bun which I do like. The bite I had without the hot dog is the best bite. I obviously don't like hot dogs so I don't care for the meat piece in there but there's dill, there's cucumber, there's a nice mustard on there, fried onions and the buttered bun are all excellent. If I liked hot dogs I think this would be like a lights out definitely a good treat to try so if you like hot dogs give it a try and let me know how it is in the comments. Um, but I'm glad I tried it. I just, you know what, don't need to buy a full-size one in the park. In the complete opposite realm of a hot dog, I'm also trying the Liege waffle. This is from the Belgium booth, and it's got strawberry sauce and fresh whipped cream and sugar crystals on top. Excited to channel my inner Leslie Nope. Ooh. Yep. That's awesome. That's for sure the best dessert I've tried from the Mardi Gras lineup. Big sugar crystals on it to give it a little crunch. Nice buttery, perfect waffle, crispy on the outside. The strawberry sauce is definitely sweet, but it's not artificially sweet. It, you can tell it's made with real strawberries and that fresh whipped cream on top. Yeah, that is a crowd-pleasing dessert. 
we'll definitely be eating more of those before Mardi Gras over. Oh, my name's Laura Sauls. I'm the Assistant Director of Creative Development here in Entertainment for the Art and Design Group. We work closely with our current partners in New Orleans. They are the makers of Mardi Gras parades and the authentic Mardi Gras parades in New Orleans. That's what makes our parade so authentic to the New Orleans celebration. Um, we get to take a trip out to New Orleans every year and they take us around to like six to eight um, prop dens that they have in New Orleans where they, they keep everything, right? They have props from their very first parade to their current parades that we go and we kind of shop. We go around and kind of see what props could, could have a story, could tell a story, could have a theme. Um, last year we went to New Orleans without this theme and in that shopping trip, we found this theme. Um, that night, we, uh, the team goes back to the hotel. Our senior scenic designer, Curtis Hopkins, draws up the six new floats. We come up with a storyline that night. Oh the next day, we take it back to Kern and say, here's what we wanna do. Um, and then it all happens from there. So it, it is really a really magical and fun trip in two days. Um, but we love to do it and we're excited to do it for 2024. We do it in a couple weeks. <laughs> so. We have the mythical realms of Mardi Gras. It's dragons and unicorns and serpents and woodland creatures all on a journey to the goddess of Mardi Gras herself, where her float is an overabundance of everything Mardi Gras, from beads and bunting and everything you can think of Mardi Gras. I saw the parade this weekend, and as a former horse girl, the Pegasus unicorn float was for sure my favorite. Yep. Those costumes were awesome. Yep. So. The costume team outdid themselves this year. All of the costumes for the six new units all light up so beautifully. They're just amazing, and the, and the cast is so incredible. They love it. They're having so much fun. So, yeah. I, it's awesome. I also want to give props to your team and the casting team. I saw many plus size dancers out there in their sexy Mardi Gras costumes, and it was just awesome. So I love the parade, and I can't wait to see it again tonight. Yay! Thank you so much, Laura. You're welcome. Thank you. Have fun. We have followed these tall Mardi Gras friends to the Cursed Coconut Club. So this is a club on City Walk called the Red Coconut Club, but they have been re-theming it for each seasonal event. So right now it is the Cursed Coconut Club with a nice voodoo theme. I'm so excited to go in here. Hello. Hello. Here we go. Ooh, it's spooky. Oh, it's like HHN. <laughs> Breathe it in. Breathe in that smell. We are in the Cursed Coconut. It is really, really cool in here. There's a cool photo op when you walk in. Uh, there's also this wall of voodoo dolls. And if you listen closely, you can actually hear them whispering and talking. And um, I'm afraid of that one specifically. I don't like the look that one's given me. Not a big fan of this one either, but um, this is awesome. Also sampling the Gooms Bay Smash. This is one of the drinks that you can get throughout Mardi Gras at several of the booths. You can put this in your refillable cups. This is the smaller size cup. Um, it is a rum punch, so it's gonna have rum, some grenadine, pineapple juice, lime juice. Cheers. Tastes like a pretty typical rum punch, which if you know me is not my drink. However, it's not cloyingly sweet. Um, it, there's a little bit of tartness in there from the lime juice. So if you like a rum punch, it's fun to put this in your cup. But for me, I definitely stick to the beers. I think this is my favorite part yet. There's all these black lit skeletons with tarot cards. I just think it's so fun that Universal does this seasonally. This was the dead coconut club during Halloween Horror Nights. It was the red and green coconut club during Christmas featuring Earl the Squirrel and now to be the cursed coconut club. Really, really fun. This is open for any guests in the evening time. They'll have themed drinks and they've got some themed music going. A really fun addition if you want to keep the good times rolling after the parks close. Headed upstairs at the cursed coconut club. This is so cool in here. I think this is such a genius idea for Universal to do this, to keep the party going, to do themed bars. Who doesn't love a themed bar? Ooh. Spooky. Ooh, I feel witch doctor vibes. It's like a pig head in there. Got all kinds of bottles and beakers and ooh, I love this. It's giving HHN and now I want a like voodoo themed HHN house. This is so fun. Crocodile skull.
Well, we had a great time during the opening week of Mardi Gras. It was a blast. I love trying all of the different food. What were your best eats that we had? My two best would be the bocadillo, phenomenal, as well as the fried green tomato po' boy. Uh, what about yours? My favorites were the king cake. I love getting that every year. I really liked those uh, onion fritters in India. I really liked that they made a craft beer just for this festival, so I got to shout that out. But my number one, no surprise to anyone, is Twisted Tater with the spicy andouille sausage queso. Mwah! I cannot wait to eat many more of those before the end of Mardi Gras. What would you not eat again? The Coco Loco. While it was good, I could only ever have one of them. And if I were coming back and it was going to be my only time going to Mardi Gras, I wouldn't get the Coco Loco again. Similarly, I wouldn't get the cheese arepa again. It was good, it was fine, the sauce was nice, but I wanted a little bit of heat and it was just kind of simple and not that exciting compared to some of the other dishes we had. So I would rather eat some of the other cheesy things that we had. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're new and follow us on all of our socials. Thank you again to Universal Orlando for inviting us out to the media event where we got to try a little bit more food and chat with some folks that make this event happen. Are you coming to Mardi Gras? Let us know what you're excited about down in the comments. And in the meantime, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been so magical. Let the good times roll, y'all. Bye, everybody. Remember when you were in the Beat Builders? I do. That was neat. I do. I got to nice. build a beat.